L'objet de mon propos est de vous présenter les My talk is about the various options to recover energy from the biomass. Energy recovery is therefore available in different forms, the thermal form, heat or biofuels, or also the electrical form. What do we mean by biomass? It's a gen generic term, but there is a relatively accurate definition. There is the so-called European definition of the biomass. The biomass is the biodegradable fraction of byproducts and residues from uh, agriculture, forestry, and related industries, and also the biodegradable part of household waste and industrial waste. So by biomass, we refer to the biomass coming from uh, photosynthesis, and here we have a huge resource. The annual production of a vegetal biomass is 170 billion tons of dry matter per year on the planet. If we add the fossilized biomass, which can be used in the form of oil, gas, or coal, the world resource is estimated at 1,800 billion tons of dry matter per year. However, we also have waste biomass, biomass contained in waste and residues. Again, there are different types. There are green waste, household waste, food industry waste, and also livestock manure. The biomass, whether it comes from plants, or uh, all kinds of waste, constitutes the raw material for plants where energy carriers can be produced. These plants sometimes use uh, pure strains of microorganisms, uh, yeasts or, micro or microalgae, or microbial ecosystems, a number of bacteria and microorganisms uh, which are both complex and very diverse. Currently, there are two energy carriers being produced on the, in an industrial level, bioethanol and biomethane. And there are also other energy carriers which are currently being investigated. There is development work in progress. Bioethanol first. In terms of volume, bioethanol is the first fuel produced at industrial scale. Across the world in 2013, the production was uh, 51 billion liters in the U.S., 41 billion liters in Brazil and 6.7 billion liters in Europe. Production areas use two types of biomass. There are sugar biomasses such as beetroot, sugar, root, sugar beet or sugar cane, and there are starch-based biomasses, wheat or maize. There is a third category represented by uh, linear cellulose, uh, but right now this type of uh, biomass is not being used on the industrial level. Ethanol is produced from uh, plant raw materials in three stages. The first stage consists in turning the uh, vegetal material, raw material in uh, simple sugars, saccharose, for instance, uh, or glucose. Extraction and diffusion are used uh, on sugar beet and sugar cane. Also, enzymatic hydrolysis of starch for uh, starch plants, starchy plants, and for lignocellulosic plants, the process is a bit more complex because it requires a pre-processing in order to destructure lignocellulose, for instance, uh, straw or wood, followed by enzymatic hydrolysis on the cell. The second stage consists in transforming simple sugars in ethanol. This is carried by a yeast called uh, Saccharomyces cerisiae, which 
produces 0.48 grams of ethanol per gram of sugar. The third stage is uh, the recovery of ethanol in the fermentation fluid. This is achieved by distillation. Once pure ethanol has been recovered, it can be either used for combustion engines, it can be used in uh, positive ignition uh, engines, 5, 10 or 24 percent uh, mix in uh, Petrol, but it also can also be used pure, like in Brazil. But in that case, the engines must be modified and are no longer positive inject ignition engines. The second uh, energy carrier produced on the industrial scale is biogas. In 2012, the production was estimated at 17.2 million tonnes of oil equivalent. The raw material used to produce biogas are of various types. Biogas can be obtained from uh, organic matter contained in livestock waste or um, sludge coming from uh, water treatment plants or household waste or food waste or dedicated energy crops. There are two main differences uh, if we compare with uh, bioethanol. For biogas, it is not a pure strain of microorganisms that, are, that is used, but rather a complex uh, system, uh, ecosystem of microbial origin. And also, bioethanol must be obtained from uh, simple sugars, whereas here we can use lipids or proteins or sugars. This is made possible by the fact that we're talking about a uh, very diverse microbial ecosystem that converts the raw material in biogas following four stages, hydrolysis, acidogenesis, acetogenesis, and methanogenesis. Methanization or biogas production is a natural, a naturally occurring uh, reaction. It can be found in rice field sediments or tidal sediments or even in mammal guts. Man has simply tried to intensify the reaction in a container. The container can be a digester or a non-toxic waste storage unit called in French ISDND. Once biogas has been purified, it can be used in four different ways. Either it is uh, processed uh, by heat and turned into heat, or it can uh, be used to recover heat and electrical power thanks to cogeneration plants. It can also be used as a biofuel. In that case, it's called uh, natural gas, uh, um, bio GNV, and it can also be injected in the uh, gas grid. I'm going to talk to you about biohydrogen. Hydrogen is a, uh, an energy carrier currently being used uh, as a chemical reactant, reagent in uh, refinery and chemistry, but it can also be used for transportation. It is very promising for electrical power production and transportation. It can be obtained uh, through a uh, biological processing, biohydrogen. It can also be obtained by water biophotolysis thanks to cyanobacteria. It can also be obtained through photofermentation thanks to uh, purple bacteria with uh, a acetic acid and light, and finally it can also be obtained from dark fermentation on substrates such as glucose with the help of uh, microbial species and bacterial species uh, of the Clostrid Clostridia family. The second carrier which is currently being investigated and developed in a very intensive way 
is bioelectricity. It is possible to produce electrical power thanks to microbial batteries. Microorganisms are used to catalyze uh, organic matter catalyzation in order to release electrical current. On the anode, a, a reaction, an oxidization reaction takes place. The final fermentation products are oxidized, for instance, hydrogen. Oxidization which releases protons and electrons. The electrons uh, go to the cathode through an electrical circuit and produce electrical power. The last case is that of biolipids. As it happens, biofuel can also be produced for diesel engines thanks to microorganisms and microalgae. Right now, biodiesel is obtained from uh, higher plant oils, such as uh, rapeseed or sunflower or soya. And the reaction called esterification is uh, achieved with methylon, methanol, and the vegetal oil can be incorporated uh, in uh, diesel oil uh, with a mix of uh, 5 and 30 percent. There are microalgae that can accumulate lipids provided that they undergo some kind of stress. The microalgae are grown in reactors. They uh, are submitted to a stress, nitrogen deficiency, or a thermal shock, or a uh, light over intensity. They accumulate lipids up to 80% of their dry mass. Once the microalgae have been uh, collected following centrifugation and deposition, the lipids can be extracted with a solvent, esterified exactly the same way that the uh, oils are esterified in the vegetal option. And this uh, provides algal biodiesel. Energy carrier production from the biomass is part and parcel of uh, what we call biorefinery, the idea being to use biomass in order to produce compounds that can be uh, applied in the field of energy, chemistry, or even building. And biomasses are interesting because they uh, come in large quantities and they are renewable. Very often, they also are environmental friendly because they release very little uh, greenhouse effect gases. However, the use of biomass for bioenergy production is realizing the fact that it are very expensive and they need to be subsidized. For energy carriers that are currently being investigated, current uh, research and development work Aim, aims at uh, optimizing the, uh, the speed at which the process is carried out in order to improve yield and the cost of conversion.